Now I'm sure you all got some questions about this get up. Why would the first sermon on the rebuilt website have me and my tough enough to wear pink shirt? Well, the obvious part is I'm tough enough to wear pink. Can't seem to get my hat straight or look straight. But we're winging this one, folks. <clears throat> and it's because I remembered an old true story today about having too many irons in the fire or too many women in the kitchen. I went to a Hispanic buddy of mine's family reunion once. It was potluck. I made my not yet famous fat man beans. <clears throat> And it was it was Mexican food, but uh, somebody showed up with a huge platter of deviled eggs. Doesn't bother me at all because I eat the whole thing normally. But uh, <laughs> having too many women in the kitchen or too many cooks stirring the pot. Are too many pots in the luck. <laughs> well, this woman used mustard relish because it's what she had to make all these deviled eggs. Probably the most disgusting thing I've ever eaten. <clears throat> Now the moral behind all this is simply you got to watch the company you keep on every level. Now in this particular case, my advice to the, my buddy's mother was, well, next time you have a potluck, tell her she don't have to bring anything. That'll stop that right in its tracks. The, it's not going to get regular relish, sweet or dill, but mustard relish makes me queasy just thinking about it. And that's right. Since I'm in my pink shirt, I can pick on you women. But I'm gonna pick on the men too. You just, you just wait. The company we keep that starts on every level from your, the friends you pick in school to the friends you keep after school to the people you hang out with in college or the people you fraternize with when you fall off and go binge drinking none, none of these people are necessarily evil but they can make it awful hard to do what you're supposed to be doing as a proper true Christian. And that's witnessing to them and taking care of things the way God sees fit. Now, <clears throat> Christ said once over the penitent woman that was about to be stoned, by my angry mob, let ye without sin cast the first stone, and the crowd dispersed. I think that's one of Christ's miracles. But the company you keep, if they're rock chunkers, then eventually. He's going to start rubbing off on you. Now, whether that rock is metaphorically a bigger bottle of whiskey than normal, or whiskey in general, too many beers and getting behind the wheel because everybody else says they're the drunk one, sitting around in the fire, and all of a sudden there's some marijuana being passed around. 
I know all this, but I made some bad choices in my younger years, all the way up until I got to college age. Found out it was too hard to party and make good grades so that I could keep playing baseball. Uh, fellas, you know what too many irons in the fire does to you. Eventually, one of you is going to get burned, and more often than not, the one that's going to get reap the worst. Maybe not the burn, but reap the worst mentally is going to be the one that fella sitting there who's going, this, this is going right, I'm not going to get this right. I asked a simple question and was expecting a simple answer out of my best friend and maybe two others so I don't mess it up when I get home with my wife and my girlfriend. But all these people sitting around the campfire, they may not all be there for your well-being. They may be hammered, absolutely hammered drunk. They may be high as a kite. There's nothing you can do about it once they start giving you bad advice besides ignore it and leave. If you saddle up your horse and get out of there just as fast as you can, you'll be much better off and you can call your best friend and your other buddies that are trustworthy later to get good advice, sound advice and you chattering women <clears throat> whether you're standing in the kitchen or out on a patio or at a bar having a margarita after work one day you're not all going to be good, true Christian people. It's just not going to happen. There's going to be at least that one bad egg mixed with mustard and relish, and you're going to get it. So, in all things, you should watch the company you keep. Because, I can tell you right now, Christ is watching and you might not remember to repent for that bad judgment you made on bad advice or the tickets you got on leaving on bad advice or <clears throat> the time you serve for any number of things. Hey, can you stick this in the, in your purse? And it's got it's a pack of cigarettes, right? With six joints in it. And you get pulled over. They're in your purse. They're in your purse. And it's going to fall on your head. And they're going to slink away and not give the care in the world. Because they didn't care about putting you in danger in the first place. Back to the fellas. I've got too many irons in the fire. Doesn't always have to do with too much advice or too much bad advice. But uh, sometimes it can be the exact same scenario, except it's man, I'm I just can't I I don't need to drive. I can't go I can't go to jail. And you had. You know, you had one drink and had just gotten there, and this guy's asking you to take you take him home. And guess what? You're the one going to jail. You're the one who's going to pay all that money. You know how much it costs in Texas to get one DWI? And this is with the lawyer who's a family friend. Twenty thousand dollars, easy, and that's with probation and no jail time. Um, I know it seems like I'm talking a very hard subject on our first <coughs> sermon. As, as the new website comes to life, but uh, the world is hard, 
and it can beat you up if you let it or you can work one person at a time back into the light back into the hands of Christ let him into their hearts that's the kind of company you got to keep the best company you can find is in the church house so if you're not in one I suggest you find one if you're not happy in the one you're in there's a bunch more out there I live way out in the middle of nowhere but I can touch six churches on half a tank of gas or half a gallon of gas and I get 10 miles to the hour in my old truck so I'll take my pink shirt off next time and put on something else but if you join me in a closing prayer I appreciate it dear Heavenly Father Christ Jesus and the Holy Spirit I hope that I was pleasing in your sight in the things that I shared with everyone today and that in some way if I can affect just one person a week through the sermon it'll all be worth it if I can get positive results out of 10% I uh, just that's that's the dream. But by the rule of multiplication, one person turn around and act right and find two turns into four, turns into eight, turns into sixteen, turns into thirty two and so on. That's what I'm looking for, Lord. That's what we're looking for as a membership and a fellowship. And it's in your holy name that we ask to give us the strength to carry on. In this world, it is not the easiest thing to do. We're at attack, on attack on all sides as conservative Christians or traditional Christians, whatever you want. Whatever words you want to use, 